I know what you're thinking. You're jealous. And you should be. Because today, I get to take this 78 Dodge Sportsman RV and see if it'll run and drive. It's got shag on the ceiling. I'm in love. You know, if you're wondering why this old girl looks so nice and has kind of a odd seam going on here, it's because these Dodge Sportsmans were actually longer. These are kind of like your mid-sized RV motorhomes from back in the day. Um, this still has the super van sticker on it, but at some point, somebody has chopped this. Either, I think it actually forward because this rear axle would have been further back. And they brought this body closer together and made it a shorty. We've got our AAA sticker on here, so if I break down out the driveway, I can call them. And uh, yeah, let's take you for a walk around inside and see what she looks like. So the first thing you're gonna notice is one, the moss, and two, the absolute vintage. Stripe down the side. Still got the roof rack. I don't know if I'm gonna be brave enough to actually get up on top of it, but these are 16 and a half inch wheels. Um, eight lug, gonna be a monster to find. Super van sticker, and also some random poop on this tree. So as we come around the back, we notice custom AC installation. We got a spare. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since this thing's seen the road. Back door, roof access there. Again, don't think I'm gonna be heading up that, but here's, here's part of the scene that I was talking about. Somebody's done some sweet patchwork on that. Let's head around to the front. You just gotta appreciate how much, how much design was put into these old things. Wood paneling definitely doesn't stink at all uh, here's the dog house obviously back half of the engine is going to be here heater is going to be right up underneath your knees on these there is not a lot of front end on these compass so you never get lost comes with a sweet memo book and it's like maybe mileage per gallon no new ports left in the tray Zip ties and scraps of paper that might have been eaten on. Oh, cool. I don't know if you, can you see that? Lake Louise State Park, 2003. So 20 years. She ran at least 20 years ago. Gonna go ahead and take a pause on that and go get some brake cleaner i don't play that game this is going to be a disclaimer if you're from california don't watch this because that'll give you cancer or something well got one on the hand so we'll see how that feels later on while we wait for that to soak in let's head around to the back let's step on in Solid there. Oh, not solid there. Okay. I would have to guess that this back portion here, oh, a little bit of water damage, would have been toilet, shower, something like that before it was shortened. There's the AC, a water damage in the corner. Yeah, I gotta get off this floor. Ooh. Okay, now this is not very tall back here. I know it's hard to tell on camera, but it's it's squishy. Got some wallage missing here, underneath there. A little bit of insulation showing. Oh, stripes to match the outside. In all reality, this really isn't near as bad on the inside as I kind of thought it would be. I think they did a pretty good job of sealing up the roof. Must be old Coleman style 
grill. Yeah. It's got to be. Coleman. If I can get this open with one time. Oh, yeah. I've actually got one of these at home. It has the tank to it still. Free lawn chair for break time. Nice. Let's pop the old bonnet on and see what, what it's got under here. Well, there's not much to look at. Something tells me that battery's probably not any good. Oh, 2017, maybe. There's not much room here. I think we're gonna do all our work from the inside. One thing that is really common with all these Dodges is this battery tray rots out. And people either put wood or steel or whatever they can, but these are always doing this. Now, I'm not much of a Mopar guy, but I think these would have either came with a 318 or a 360. I don't really know how to tell the difference. I'm assuming I could probably look up the VIN on this and find out. Rockwood Inc. It must be the company that did all these upfits for these camper bodies. We'll pop the doghouse off and see what it looks like underneath quick. All right. That side clasp is off. I don't know that there's one on the bottom. I can't remember. That side clasp is off. And if there's more wasps in here, you are going to hear some noises. They might not all be manly. A teaspoon. Okay, we're definitely missing air cleaner cover, which is in the back. Okay. We're just going to set this off to the side. There is a lot of insulation and mouse shit on this which is just like the last thing that I worked on. So that's cool. I would say that our cruise control probably doesn't work anymore. Probably not. Um, is that flashing? Off of a house. I like whoever was working on this. Our AC probably isn't going to work either. <sighs> Well, I suppose we dig in. We'll put the nut back on the dash. 75,900 miles. I don't know if that's original, but I'm gonna lie to you and tell you it is. Oh, yep, 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 mission stuff. Actually, Crankcase breather. Okay. Some Dodge expert out here is going to tell me if this is a 318 or 360. I'm just going to tell you it's a V8 with an automatic transmission. The thought occurs to me while here that I overlooked the engine oil dipstick sticking out probably the front because to check your oil there's no way you'd want to try and get inside the doghouse cover every single time unless i'm wrong but in my mind that would make sense then again there's a long line of engineers that don't think the way that i do and that's why i don't have any friends that are engineers there's still a couple wasps out there I'm going to get them, because the one already got me. Oh, also, it looks like there may have been a small fire inside of here at one point. So, that's neat. While the guy was admiring this sweet upholstery, he noticed textbook 1978 cigarette burn. Oh, yeah. Ooh, he's pissed. I don't know how much a can of carb cleaner costs, but... 
I've already used one. God, I hate these things. Ha! Shot him out of the air. Oh, he's back. I need a can of brake clean because that's about out. Okay. Transmission? Gotta be. Chris, like a clown hanky. Just fluid. It doesn't look too bad. Okay. Oil. Of gas, but really not, not horrible. Get off my ear. I hope this is funny to you because it's not funny to me. Now that I have matrix style avoided every single wasp sting besides the first one, um, I'm just going to see if this thing starts just because, because I always like to try and see if I don't have to do more work. Taking bets. First thing is going to be first, we test the battery, which is probably going to test poop, and then we see that it cranks or burns up with all this sweet wiring that's going on here. So when it comes to old school stuff like this, I always wonder like what's the history behind this, you know? Who remembers the family camping trips? Or cooking some substances out in the back 40 living out of this you know one or the other you know the funny thing is I actually remember this this exact RV as a kid uh, set down kind of by the gas pumps here in town and had weeds trees growing up around it and everything and you know when I was a young gearhead I always thought man it'd be kind of cool to have something like that and I got to thinking about it I'm like that's lame, dude. It's a motorhome. And then I got past the point of trying to look cool, and I thought, that'd be groovy. Here it is. Oh, boy. Are you rusty? Okay. Yeah. Clean connections. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, the hold down bracket is gone. Ooh. Guess where we're headed? To the parts store to swap a shit battery with a possibly good battery. They love it when I don't buy things and I just ask if I can swap stuff. So yeah, let's see if we get thrown out. Again, 
I think we're also gonna get some uh, wasp spray. Wasp spray. Because brake cleaner is expensive and I'm real tired of using everything that I have in my shop. I'm also real tired of having things fly around my ear and you know up my pant leg, down my boot. Super fun. We are on our way back. And unfortunately, the parts store didn't let me swap a used battery for a used battery. So I can't eat for the next week. But maybe we'll have some crankage. That'd be awesome. Stay down. Think she'll crank? <laughs> Blower fans on. Nice. Okay. We're gonna shut the fan off here. Okay, so it cranks, and like everything that I try and get running, it smells like straight paint thinner. That doesn't sound like it's cranking over very fast either, which tells me we may have a bad starter, which I hope is not the case because I've changed one of these before on something just like this, and it is not fun at all. <laughs> Maybe. We may be okay. Let's pretend like everything else is fine. Next, we're going to see if we can unhook the gas line. Because I'm going to make the assumption that whatever's in this tank is probably green and fuzzy. Pilot lights and appliances shall be turned off during refueling of motor fuel tanks and or LP gas containers. Oh, that lock still works. Because if not, oh no. Oh no. Oh shit. Neighborhood's down one. One more traffic sign. Oh. There is actually like athletic tape around some of this wiring. This is bad chicken. Let's get the fuel line off here. And like every time I go to work on something, I am dead nuts right in the sun. I think I'd be able to figure this out after how many years, but no, you gotta stay warm. Oh, honk yourself. Usually after sitting for a long time, these Dodge, well, like Mopar, Mopar fuel pumps, at least mechanical pumps, are known for like dry rotting the, um, the diaphragm out in the middle of the fuel pump. I don't know, every single Dodge I've ever had, which is not a lot, but every single one after it sits for a while, fuel pump just toast. So at least there's fuel at the pump. On the plus side, I won't have any weeds in this particular spot. <sighs> kind of bummed. My tree died. So in the spirit of doing the right thing and removing the fuel hose 
from the pump. We're gonna remove the hose a little further up. Cause someday I should probably clean the fuel tank out of the uh, out of this thing. Done. The good news is if we need a distributor for the Dodge, I can't re-rob the one out of this. Oh my Lanta. You are my lady. This might actually work. Something's going too well. I don't like this. I'm rubbing my hat on stuff. It's like the only hat I have that doesn't have grease stains on it. I guess you'd call it my going to town hat. You know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful that I don't have to date again. People would be like, what's wrong with you? I mean, people do that now anyway, but I'd have to actually explain to a whole other family what's wrong with me again. <laughs> It'd be terrible. We're gonna leave the gas unhooked for now. We're gonna check for spark. So the plan is to take this spark plug, one spark plug wire off at the plug, stick it on here and we're gonna ground it against the engine. And we're gonna see if we get spark coming across here. And that'll tell us if El Distributor is working and putting out spark. Oh, come here little spark plug wire. Oh, that's right. These are angled super goofy. Holy moly. Okay, we have spark. Coil's good, points are good. And we saw after the last video how much I love dealing with points. Now, another thing I usually like to do if I don't know the condition of an engine, which this one's kind of meh. I knew that it turned over like three years ago. Um, what you should really do if something's been sitting for a long, long time, well, at least what I do is I pop all the spark plugs out and I put marble mystery oil or a 50-50 mix of ATF, so transmission fluid and acetone and let that soak for maybe a day, two days, something like that. Uh, then you throw a towel over the engine, over the spark plug holes, and you crank it over. Um, I always unhook, unhook the coil wire or whatever you want to say, uh, so it's not sending spark. But um, it will blow all that fluid right out the spark plug holes, uh, but it lubricates the cylinder walls. But if you're looking to try and save something and have it be halfway reliable, uh, there's a lot of things that have to come together, but one is you should definitely, definitely try and save uh, the piston rings and cylinder walls by lubricating them first. So with all that being said, we obviously didn't do that. We're not going to do that. Um, let's hook up some gas and see if this old girl fires. As I went to bail out, that's not from getting happy. It's the last wasp. He got in. I win. That should be good enough. She lights on fire. It's going to be up to you to put it out because I will be headed right out the back door. A little bit of gas. Yeehaw. <laughs> So remember earlier how I said that all Mopar fuel pumps, the diaphragm dries up and then won't pump fuel? Pretty sure that's what we got. Another thought occurs to me is 
if the gas smells that bad, that fuel filter is probably really grody. That might be where we're not getting gas too. We're gonna have to check both. Get the old adjustable round off here. Wow. Well, it should have came loose. It like never happens. I usually twist until the fuel line just creases and then breaks off. Okay, I was gonna set my phone right here on the carburetor, but just in case there's any fuel and there's a backfire, I really didn't want it to go up in flames. So we're gonna see if this is pumping any fuel. starter is so happy I think our fuel pump's bad I don't think there's a filter in there which is different than what I'm used to maybe it's just a Mopar thing you wouldn't understand I don't know filter or no filter I still think our fuel pump's bad so I could do this the right way and get a mechanical fuel pump and put it back in down there but that costs money so I may grab my electric fuel pump and hook it up and see what happens. Electric fuel pump time. Oh. Jimmy, what are you doing, buddy? What do you think? Scope it out. Need that honest opinion, man. a boy. You want to put a new fuel pump in this for me? Hey, Jimmy. Yeah. All right, well, meet you at the back door. Oh, if you poop back there, dude, we're going to have so many problems. Fuel pump's down there, man. We'll get to it. So in the middle of going up to the parts store to order a fuel pump, because I scrapped the idea for an electric one. Figured I'd go with the mechanical. Period, correct. The old man swung by. We had to put the belt back on the finish mower. watching I don't get to mow my own pasture old man has to do it I don't know something about grass and old dudes just go together I guess mowing's done the warm Red Bull Gross. I got the fuel pump too. So uh, I think we're gonna take a look and see how to get the old fuel pump off or start to get it off. We might have to make this a two day or like the last one. I hate doing that, but I got some stuff I already gotta do tonight that doesn't involve being down here. So we'll see how far we get. And when the time comes, we'll throw in the towel for the night and start over tomorrow. Come on, baby. I got it loose. Hell yeah. It'd probably be a lot easier to do without this little radiator hose on here, but we are not going that far. I'll round these bolts off before that happens. Oof. Gotcha. Well, that's the problem. One's not shiny, and one is. I'm now 10 minutes into threading the same bolt in, and can you guess what I forgot? 
gasket. It didn't stay on the block. I already checked. At least I know how she comes off. Maybe a ratcheting wrench. Maybe. It's the wrong size, so. Let's see how she works. What are, what are you? 15? But I'm using a 960. Okay, why won't you work then? I thought a 14 and a 916 were the same thing. Oh, I know why. Because the body of the fuel pump is too thick right there. Oh, I love my life. I was so confident that I could do this. And then I remembered I'm an idiot. You'd think I'd have manlier shoulders after doing this shit time and time again, but I don't. They just pop and burn. Like the fuel pump ain't sounding too bad, is it? Now to hook the return line up here, which I think I bent it. Did I bend it? Oh no. Hey Jimmy. <laughs> He's still on the prowl. Ouch. I'm pretty sure I did this last time too when I put a fuel pump in one of these. I got pissy and bent the thing out of the way and then regretted it when I went to put it back in. And I think that's where I'm at now. Is it a half? Are you a half? Oh, it is a half. I feel confident saying that I might have gotten it started this time. Fuel line hooked up. Return fitting in the pump. Pump tight, gasket on. Go up top, rehook the fitting up. See if we have room. Well, no wonder I could figure out why it was stuck down below. Because it's stuck up above. Yeah, just bend the piss out of her. That's exactly the way it's designed. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we're just making new threads. It's kind of what it feels like here. Look away if you like things done right. Okay. Time to prime it. Primed. Go vroom. Okay, we're closer. Just gonna heat that starter up.
Um, oh, we've got gas leaking at the front of the car. I'm assuming it's probably from the fitting that's cross-threaded, right? Yeah, no, yeah, probably. Oh, the good news is we have gas at the tip of the line. I can fill the vent hole with my priming bottle and then pump the pedal it comes out and into the chambers or into the barrels of the carb. But then after it, you know, runs on what gas I pumped into the barrels, I don't feel like it's refilling the bowl because then I can step on the pedal and it's not squirting gas into the barrels after that. Do we have a float stuck? Needle and seat? I should have paid more attention to geometry. Uh, I think we're gonna call it a night for tonight. We may have some carb cleaning to do tomorrow and I'm not excited about it, but we're close. Er, closer. We'll shut her down for the evening and come back at it tomorrow. Day two. Let's pull a carburetor. Yay! No. So far we're at like six things that I've installed and had to uninstall to then install again. Solid numbers. First, I apologize for the background noise, but the fan is all the way up on the ceiling and I'm not crawling up there just to shut it off. We're gonna go ahead and take this apart. This isn't gonna be an actual rebuild because the local parts store doesn't even have rebuild kits anymore, so that's cool. Um, we're going to take this apart and give it a good cleaning and try and figure out what's going on with it. I left my gloves at home, so this is another day of smelling like stinky gas. There is one major thing I always like to remember when I do anything with a carburetor. It is whether you're doing YouTube or not, if you're gonna do this on your own and you haven't done it much before, film it. Video might only be for you, your eyes only, but at least you won't get it apart and never get it back together. I've done that a time or two, not gonna do it again. I also like to set the bolts out in the order I take them out. It just makes it easier going back together. Some guys can tear stuff apart and throw it all over a bench and still know where it goes. Not this guy.
poor man's rebuild kit. Now to find out if it works. We just napping in the RV. Jimmy. We napping. Remember, uh, remember that on this side that I said, hey, don't lose? Yeah. Guess who lost it? This guy. Lunchtime. Warm, flat Dr. Pepper and Cheetos that have been in my truck for like three weeks. <sighs> Refill the primer bottle and... See if it starts, I guess. Let's do it. Ugh. Maybe. Maybe it's still trying to fill the bowl, maybe? Why do you sound like you got a really bad vacuum leak here? I will give you Three guesses as to who is a complete dumbass and didn't hook the fuel line back up. What's your first guess? Yeah, yeah, me. Correct. So now we'll know if we are getting gas up here. Maybe not a bad misfire, maybe just some valve train noise. I think by now it's probably pulling fuel on its own. I hope. Got good oil pressure. There won't be any mosquitoes around these parts for years to come. It looks like we've got some oil leaking over here on the valve cover. No surprise after sitting for a while. It's kind of, it's starting to smooth out a little bit. Definitely starting to smooth out a little bit. We'll get the doghouse back on it. Probably get some longer fuel line. Put the fuel tank right up in here and see if we can take this old girl for a drive. Fuel line on, a longer fuel line. Throw the gas can in front. And legally take this thing on the road. I feel like I've done this a couple times already. Okay that's on also take a guess what there's more of again yeah sweet i'll be sure to use the gas can as an airbag in case we hit anything seems safe enough doesn't it let's go camping so i made it out from its resting spot and uh now I'm still not getting any fuel through the through the bowl. And nothing's coming out the nozzles when I'm stepping on the pedal. I don't know if it's because the gas tank is too high now. And it's just not strong enough to pull it from in here inside the cab down through the pump and then back up. Um, I don't know. I'm going to put the fuel can back on the ground and see uh, 
See if it'll start filling up the bowl. That's what it was. Fuel tank's just up too high, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to strap it to the bottom step and then take it for another spin. Hello, older, bigger brother. Needle's a little goofy here, but. Does she have enough to get up this little hill? Yeah, buddy. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah, we can make it. <laughs> Shall we go for another lap? Oh, look out. Did we lose the gas can? Nope, sure didn't. It's a little smoky in here. <coughs> there she is. Running and driving. Sweet gas tank, bro. Or did I lose the hose? Okay, it's still running on whatever's in the bowl, I guess. What a champ. How long will this thing run? Oh, she's giving out. Yup, there it was. The old hill must have done her in. Well, what have we learned today? I don't know that I learned anything, but I had a good time. I hope you did too. I appreciate you sticking around. We'll catch you on the next one.